Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with zither music by Anton Karras. was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie, The Third Man. Yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. Harry Lyme had many lives. And I can recount all of them. How do I know? It's very simple. Because my name is Harry Lyme. <laughs> Yes, yes, come on, speak up. Corporal Lime is here, sir. Oh, he is, is he? Well, you can tell Corporal Lime I want to see him. Right now. You know, it's funny, but all during my military career, I've never seemed to be able to force myself to be very fond of the brass. If you've got to have an army, you've got to have the brass, I suppose, but <laughs> I don't honestly see why. <laughs> Now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyme, the third man, in today's story, The Third Woman. You know something, Corporal Lyme? No, sir. If we could prove half of this stuff in this file, you'd be celebrating your 100th birthday in a military prison. Yes, sir. I dare say so, sir. Shut up and listen. You report to the address on this slip of paper. It's a tailor on Savile Row. The tailor has his instructions. He's to make you three suits, including the full soup and fish. And the whole outfit's to be ready in 48 hours. Isn't that awful? Yes, sir. Wait a minute, it gets worse. You go to the Savoy Hotel. You know where that is? Yes, sir. A room is reserved there for you. You're registered as a civilian. For purposes of cutting red tape, you're going to be a civilian. But here are your papers. You'll be taking a trip pretty soon. Yes, we're sending you away from all these bombs. It's discouraging. I tell you, this whole army is as nutty as a fruitcake. I didn't say that, did I, Lime? No, sir, you didn't. Look at these papers. Yes, sir. See how you're traveling? Well, yeah, yes, sir, but this must be a joke. Oh, it's funny, all right, but it's true. There's the Allied Command is sending you on a holiday, Corporal Lime, and you're traveling as a civilian with the rank of full colonel. That's what I mean about brass. An unfriendly attitude, unnecessary, I call it. Why couldn't the Major have been nice? Well, if he was, I guess he wouldn't have been a Major. Of course, if you look at it that way, I was going to have to begin changing my loyalties because according to my new papers, I was part of the brass now myself. I got my new suits, and then they sent me to see a certain Captain Smith. I don't think that was his real name. He was something very high in the hush-hush department, but that was the name I was to call him by when we met. This was all set up for midnight on the right side of Cleopatra's Needle. Oh, I tell you, the whole thing was so cloak and dagger, it made me want to giggle, but of course I didn't. <laughs> I was very careful to play it straight. I didn't want to lose my nice new wardrobe. I say, could you give me a light? We're not supposed to show a light. That's correct. And what was in the bottle? Uh, Jenkins' ear. Good oh. How did Morgan die? He died a governor. Splendid, Mr. Lyme. All the answers perfectly correct. <laughs> Silly questions, what? <laughs> Silly answers, too, come to think of it. But the silliness makes it easier to remember, I always think. The mnemonics, don't you know? Right? Uh, right, right, if you say so, Captain Smith. Yes, well, now let's get down to cases. 
We've borrowed you from your people, Lyme, because of your special qualifications. Languages, looks, a certain rather celebrated aptitude for the opposite sex, <clears throat> and a fair share of unmitigated gall. Uh, yes, sir. Don't call me sir. Remember, this isn't the army, not strictly speaking. Yeah, this is another show. What do you think of spying, Lyme? Well, I, I don't know. I never tried. Oh, it's a dirty business, of course. Absolutely filthy. But then it's a profession like anything else. Yes, uh, I suppose. For one thing, the pay is abominable. And that's why so many of the regular pros turn double agent on it. You know what a double agent is, don't you? Well, that's an agent who sells out to another power, isn't it? Yes. We're on to most of that lot, of course. We use them when we can, but it's always sticky. No doubt about that, sticky. Well, first of all, of course, we're not dealing with soldiers or patriots, and no money arrangement is ever really final or binding. Mm. And that's why we have to use pressure. Yeah. Uh, different sorts of pressure, don't you know? Uh, blackmail, for instance. Right. Listen. Mm. Another one of those v V2s. Huh? That was in Chelsea. Uh. Falling weapons, aren't they, guided missiles? I'll tell you something, Lyme, because it's going to be part of your job. This V2 is nothing. Jetty's getting ready with something a good deal worse in the same line. About ten times worse, according to our information. Yes. Somewhere in Europe, more than a hundred feet underground, there's a factory where they're busy perfecting quite a new thing. We've got to stop them, Lyme. Want to help? Oh, sure. You didn't ever happen to meet a female named Brunel, did you? No, I don't think so. Brunel, also brown, also brune. Well, that doesn't ring any bells. No, well, maybe when you see her, there'll be a small chime or two. She's mm -hmm. been around, and so I gather have you, right? Well, I've been around a bit, Captain Smith, but I don't know your Brunel, brown or brune. Reddish blonde, sometimes auburn, grey eyes, rather tall, speaks eight languages perfectly, five or six more, well enough. No, no. She's been a professional agent for more than 15 years. Good at her work, too. Yes, she's quite valuable to us, off and on. This, it appears, is one of the off times. It's very much off. She was due to send us something rather important, you know. I gave you a hint about that. Oh, you, you mean the new rocket factory? You mean Brunel has information about where it is and she won't send but it? Worse, she's given us false information. Yeah. We think she really did manage to find out where this new guided missile thing's being built. And we guess she isn't telling us the truth because the Germans have some sort of hold over her. Yes, blackmail or something beastly. Now, we'd like you to see if you can't get some sort of line on just what it is. We don't really expect you to succeed, but well, go down and have a try, won't you? Yes, but wh what do I do? Where do I go? You'll receive sealed instructions when you get on the plane. On the plane? Details, background, all that sort of thing. Yes, but what do you mean? You'll see that car across the way. Well, I see a car, It's but... waiting to take you to the airport. Well, good hunting. <laughs> Pilot? Pilot? Yes? That doesn't look like the Bosporus to me. No, it doesn't. It, it that. looks like the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, it does, doesn't it? But don't you know what it says in my instructions? I mustn't tell that, you know. Those instructions are supposed to be secret. That's all very well, but I'm under orders to proceed to Istanbul, and here we are in... Where are we, anyway? Well, this flight isn't part of your show at all. We just happen to be carrying you, if you see what I mean. A little out of your way, of course. There's an awful lot of red tape attached to getting in and out of these neutral yes, but countries. My instructions are... Don't worry, there's bound to be someone of your chaps waiting to take you the rest of your journey tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, relax and enjoy Lisbon. We're coming in now. Oh, so that's where we are. Yes, you better fasten your seatbelt. Where's that place, Lisbon? Sure enough, they had me all fixed up for a flight to Turkey in the morning. I wasn't complaining. Oh, there weren't any rockets falling on Lisbon. Anyway, it's always been one of my favorite places for having a good time. I checked into the hotel, changed into my nice new white tie and tails, and took a cab out to the casino at Estoril. Comment vas-tu? Genevieve. Genevieve? What are you doing in Lisbon? My dear, in this city there are two things we try to avoid. The first is never, unless it's absolutely necessary, to address a friend by name. After all, you know one's name may not be one's name anymore. All right, darling. What's the second rule? It is a more strict one. We observe it very carefully. Fine, but you can't just expect me to obey the law if I don't know it. You asked me what I was doing in Lisbon. Oh, well, that's it. Sherry, no matter what the provocation, we never, never, under any circumstances, ask each other what we are doing in Lisbon. Well, I'm perfectly willing to tell you what I'm doing. Don't bother. Why not? I've got a good job. Oh? Yes. I represent the biggest Swedish manufacturers of ball bearings, and tomorrow I'm going up to Stockholm. To Stockholm? And... By way of Istanbul? Oh, 
You mean you know? Sherry, in Lisbon these days, everyone knows everything about everybody and no one asks anybody anything. The first is a question of pride and the second of politesse. It's very warm in here. Shall we go out on the terrace? Am I allowed to answer that one? Or must I tell you in code? Uh, you like it here in Lisbon, Genevieve? Or am I breaking the rules again? I have my work. And, of course, I mustn't ask you what the work is. You know, I remember when you used to be a nice little hard-working confidence girl in Cairo. You were trying to avoid the cops of at least five different countries, but you weren't nearly so secretive. Okay, okay. What are we allowed to talk about now? Harry. Yeah? Why should we talk? That's true. Why should we? That was a nice kiss. You still do that very nicely, Harry, but... <laughs> What's the joke? You are such a terrible spy. Oh, I guess I am a spy. Listen, Harry, I've always liked you. I'm not working for your people, but I know what you're up to. Don't go to Istanbul. Well, I haven't got any choice, honey. I think I'd go anyway. You know, make your ass as a cat. Why shouldn't I go? They put you onto something terribly big, Harry. Terribly important. Well, that's very flattering, isn't it? Tell me. What do you know about a woman called Brunel? Oh, she's been an agent a long time. I don't know her, but I've seen her once in Saint Moritz and again in Deauville. I hear she's clever. They are watching from the terrace. Mm -hmm. I must go back now, but please, Harry, do not go to Istanbul. It's not the woman Brunel. It is the situation. I tell you, Harry, it's too big for an amateur. It's too big for anyone. Oh, but they've given me a chance, And why? Harry. Why have they sent you? Because you are so experienced in espionage? Oh, no, of course not. That isn't the reason. Then you know her. You know why people like you are sent on missions like this? No, I can't say that I because do. Because you do not matter at all, that is why. Because they don't care what happens to you, not one little bit. Because you are, how you say, expendable. Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. Orson Welles, as the third man, continues with today's story, The Third Woman. We made good time to Istanbul with only a few nasty minutes, and I thought a couple of message minutes were going to get on our tail. But by 11 o'clock that evening, all my arrangements were made. I was carefully dressed once again in my nice new English white tie and tails. I made my way straight to Georgette's, an upholstered sewer masquerading as a nightclub left my top hat with a check girl and called for the head waiter. Good evening, sir. You are alone, monsieur? Perhaps I can get mine here at table. Near the floor, senor. Where's Georgette? I beg pardon? You heard me, Georgette. Georgette? Yes, where is he? There's no one here by that name, sir. This is for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, please come this way. Through here, sir. Thanks. If you will step through the kitchen, sir. Here we are. J'espère vous voir demain, chérie. Nous allons parler ensemble. Excuse, please. Yes, what is he? Uh, there is a gentleman here who says he knows you. Oh, yes, and who? Harry. Hiya, George. Well, well, Harry. Uh, just a minute. J'ouvre vous demain, comme d'habitude, oui? Oui, au revoir. Well, well, Harry. May I sit down? I won't be able to stop you. What are you after? Information. Willing to pay for it. With money? With money. Top market price. You know an agent called Brunel? Suppose I did. Who's shaking her down? Who wants to know? People with the money, George. There's a lovely American Cadillac, Harry. Um, Custom-made body. I'll, I'll give you the address of the man who wants I'll to sell it. I'll drive it over to your place tomorrow. What's the address? Not my address, Harry. That wouldn't be very discreet. There's a new nightclub out by the pyramids. The Sphinx? You get around, don't you? 
Want the car at the Sphinx? Yes, leave it in the parking lot about midnight tomorrow. Uh, give the key to the doorman. And then what? I'll have a table reserved for us inside. If you don't like what I tell you, you can take back the key. Otherwise, I drive home in a new Cadillac, okay? The next day, I bought the car. That night, I left it in the parking lot by the Sphinx. I got a nice big salam from the Senegalese doorman when I gave him the car key. And inside, I found Georgette waiting for me at a ringside table. Oh, it's a nice place, isn't it? Hello, Not Harry. better than that flea bag of yours. What are you drinking? And is it? Make mine a double scotch. Now oh, then, let's have the dope. I hate to do this, Harry. It goes against my principles. Don't cut it out, Georgie don't... boy. Let's get down to case. The party you were asking about has a sister. No, oh, is that it? A younger sister. Where is she now? She's in Istanbul, too, but uh, she isn't free to move around very much. You mean it's a snatch? You might say she's been held as a hostage. Who's doing the holding? The young lady whose name, by the way, is Julie, arrived in Turkey three weeks ago for a holiday. She's, she's been going to school in Switzerland. She hadn't seen her older sister for a year. Come on, Georgette, where is she? You might say um, she's a guest at a certain embassy. What embassy? I prefer not to use proper names, Harry. Here's the address. Yeah. Yeah. I told you not to use any names, Harry. Yeah, tough gang here in Istanbul, even for Nazis, ever since Van Papen. One more name and I leave. Not by car, sweetheart. The key the doorman's holding doesn't oh, fit. Crossing me up as usual, Harry. Not at all. Here's the real key. You get it when you're finished. Finished what? I've told you everything I know. You told me Brunel's sister's been kidnapped by the Keep Germans. Keep your voice down, Harry. Okay. Sister's being held in the German embassy. How long do you think they can keep her? Well, this is as good as mine. I'd say for as long as Brunella herself can be forced to function effectively. You mean as a double agent? Of course. She must have got onto something good, and the Germans must be particularly anxious for her not to spill it. They're probably hoping to use it to lead your people just as far away from the truth as possible, and uh, for as long as possible. And uh, what happens when Brunel gets tired of cooperating? She's very fond of that kid sister. Well, what happens to her finally, to Julia, I mean? They'll kill her, won't they? Yes. I should think so. Uh, waiter! Waiter, bring me another anisette. Yes? What is it? Miss Brunel? What do you want? I came here to see you about Captain Jenkins. What about him? His ear is in a bottle. Also, there's Governor Morgan. Come in, come in. Okay. No need for all that rigmarole. I know who you are. You're Harry Lahn. That's you used right. to run contraband out of Marseille in 37. I met you once in Monte Carlo. Now they've sent you from London. What's your message? Sorry, I haven't got any message. Nonsense. They've sent you here to tell me something. What is it? The message is supposed to come from you, Miss Brunel. Uh, it's about 500 RAF planes waiting for the address of a certain rocket factory. The information is past due. I've sent the information through the regular channels. It wasn't information. The London people took the trouble to check up on it. What you sent was the location and description of a shoe factory in Norway. And, Miss Brunel, do you know what they're actually making in that factory? No. Shoes. The London people think you have another address, Miss Brunel. They sent me to get it from you. I've always given perfect satisfaction. My, my save it, honey, is... save it. Let's get the whole thing down to facts. Fact one, you know where that rocket factory really is. Fact two, I know where your kid sister really is. Fact three, get me the rocket factory, and I'll deliver Julie. How can you do that? There, there are over 60 people in the embassy. She's up on the third floor. There are armed guards. They're giving a reception, aren't they, tomorrow night? Who? The German embassy, honey. Don't go stupid on me. I want an invitation. But how can I do that? You can do it. You're working for them, aren't you? Here's the name. I've squared it with the Istanbul police. You go on from there. Get me the invitation to that party and get yourself two tickets for Switzerland. You mean you really the think... The plane that... leaves at 4.30 in the morning. Bring all the information on that rocket factory to the airport. I'll bring Julie. <coughs> Well, uh, goodbye now. Sorry, but I've got to run. Where are you going? I'm going to play pinochle with the chief of the Turkish fire department. Well, goodbye for now. Promptly at ten the next night bearing my invitation from the Nazi embassy, courtesy of Miss Brunel, and wearing the best Savile Row white tie and tails, courtesy of the Allied Command, I paid my respects to His Excellency, the German ambassador. Hi, Littler. Ah, good evening, sir. 
Mr. Cotton, Mr. Cotton, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I believe that is the name. Mr. Mr. Cotton. Cotton is the name. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Ambassador. It's awfully nice of you to invite oh, me. Oh, it is our Thank pleasure, much, Mr. Sir. Cotton. The German Reich is particularly interested in the development of industry. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, I would like to put a few questions to you privately, Mr. Cotton. Won't well, you please uh, step this way? Well, Mr. Ambassador... So I won't keep you long if you will just step into the elevator. Oh, all right. After you, please. Thank you. It is rash to talk serious business in this mm. large public gathering. We will be much quieter in my study. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Up you, please. Through here, Mr. Lyme. Hey. Put up your hands, Mr. Lyme. Hi. And keep them, sir. This gentleman, as you can see, is armed, and this room is quite soundproof. He will not hesitate to use his gun. Okay. Now what happens? We will discuss that a bit later, Mr. Lyme. Now I must return to my guests. Meanwhile, Gerhard here will keep you company. Well. Well, Gerhard, here we are. Keep your hands up. Uh, this says I'm stupid, Gerhard. Do you agree with him? All the Americans are stupid. Do you think it'd be stupid for me to try to get that gun away from you, Gerhard? Well, I suppose it would, but... Anyway, I'm going to try. <laughs> Sorry I only got you in the leg, old man, but I never was much of a shot. Pete! What I, what I need today is to practice my marksmanship, and since this is such a nice soundproof... Uh, what are you doing? What shall I try for, Gerhard? An arm or the other leg? Oh, no, no! All right, then. Where's the girl? What girl? Uh... Well, it's your right hand, wasn't it, Gerhard? Now, then, let's try for a foot. Oh, no, no, she's in there. To that okay, thanks. Julie, Julie. What do you want? I'm not one of the Nazis, Julie. You have to take my word for it. I'm your sister's friend. That's the elevator. The elevator? They're coming up. Bolt the door. It won't do any good. This door is the only way out. Well, there's the window. No use. The, the window's locked, isn't it? Here, give me that chair. I tell you, it's no use. One, two, three. There's big gardens on this side of the house. No one will hear. And beside the embassy guards... Well, they're starting to break down the door. Jump, Julie. Through the window? Through the window. Where else, you little mug? It's four stories to the ground. Shut up and jump. That's the girl. Put down that gun, Lime. Look out below, Julie. I'm coming after you. It's four stories, Lime. You wish to kill yourself? Well, Mr. Ambassador, you told me I was stupid. Our feet is in. <laughs> That night, there was seen in the streets of Istanbul one of the strangest sights in the history of that historic city. A procession, a procession of firemen, firemen bearing two bundles wrapped in canvas, rushed out of the German compound and boarded a fire truck, a gigantic hook and ladder. Out of the bundles, which were, of course, firemen's jumping nets, there emerged two figures, a young lady by the name of Julie and a gentleman called Harry Lyme. Where to, Mr. Lyme? Where do we take you? To the airport and step on it. Yes? Uh, Major? Yes, yes, come on, speak up. Corporal Lyme is here, sir. Oh, he is, is he? Well, you can tell Corporal Lime I want to see him right now. Here I was back in London. Here with my old friends, the Major and Captain Smith. Only this time the Major had a new sheaf of papers concerning my exploits on the desk in front of him. Less about black market this time and more about Harry Lime, the hero. I came to attention, saluted smartly. Corporal Lyon. Yes, sir. I've been reading your report. Yes, Very sir. interesting. Thank you, sir. Oh, there's just one thing. Uh, yes, Captain Smith? The Turkey is a neutral country. How did you manage to get all that cooperation out of the fire department? Well, I used persuasion, sir. You'll find it all down on the expense account, Major. Mm. Mm. I thought you might like to know, Corporal, that there was quite an air raid the other night over a certain factory on the Baltic Sea. The Germans won't be making that new rocket, Corporal. Not for some time, anyway. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, sir. I suppose you think we owe the whole thing to you, don't you, Corporal? Well, we don't. Uh, no, sir. That air raid was held three nights ago when you were in Lisbon. Three nights? Uh, but, sir... Brunel wasn't the only source of information. Not by a long shot. Uh, I'm instructed to tell you that the facts we were looking for were sent to us from Portugal, from an agent by the name of Genevieve. However, we're most grateful for your help. 
I've been asked to give you this. Wait a minute, where did I put it? Sometimes I think this isn't a war at all, but a grand convention of lunatics. I didn't say that, did I, Corporal? No, sir, you didn't. I didn't think I did. Here you are. This is from the British with their compliments. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, what is it? It's an address. We thought you might have lost it. It's that tailor in Savile Row. Yeah. They want you to return the suit. <laughs> Harry Lyme returns in just a moment. And now, Harry Lyme. The one thing about Genevieve, she taught me a lesson. Now I understand why women make better spies than men. They're so obviously more honest. You know, you always presume they're lying and never even suspect that they might be telling the truth. <laughs> Thank you. 